Welcome back, everyone. I'm here today with Arjen Lukasen, who is amazing and an incredible, incredible composer, musician, writer for voice extraordinaire, I have to say. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much, Arjen, for taking time to have this little My My back. pleasure, really, really. I enjoy your show, so I'm happy to be here. <laughs> uh, you've been one of the nicest and easiest people to correspond with from the really? get-go. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's been, you're wonderful. I remember kind of back when the channel was still pretty early and yeah. we were just getting started into things and people were saying, oh, you have to check out Arian, 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 everything. And yeah. they said, Arian's really nice to work with. Don't worry. You won't have any problems with being blocked or taken down. Just write to Arian. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, when we did encounter what we thought might be a problem, I wrote you and uh, and then you just made it all fine. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's thanks, thanks to the record company as well, you know, they're very helpful and I just say, uh, whitelist this channel, it's all, everything is fine for me, you know, any, any attention is good, that's the way I see it, so, no, I'm always happy to help, you know, I always spend a few hours every morning answering all these mails and messages and, and socials and stuff like that, and I enjoy it, so. Oh, good. Again, good, again, good, good. my my pleasure. <laughs> yeah, I, I can be, I think, almost overwhelming sometimes when you get to a point where you have lots of people emailing you. And I'm glad that that is something that you still really enjoy. Uh, I enjoy it uh, if it's not too much, you know, if it's <laughs> if I if I have a lot of other things going like recording and then you you can't do it for a couple of days and you come back and the inbox is like completely full, you know, that's oh, that's daunting. <laughs> but I always know it takes a couple of days and, and it will work out, you know, but I mean, all these people, they 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 took time, you know, to write me. So I really feel that I should answer them, you know, it's, I mean, because of them, I can do what I do. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, no, I really enjoy it. So, uh, <laughs> I feel that too. I feel the, um, the, I think it's so important to stay in contact with your community. Absolutely. And, you know, yeah. uh, especially cause I'm a total recluse, you know, I <laughs> never, I, really, I, I never go out. I never see anyone. I don't tour anymore. So you don't meet the fans. So mm -hmm. this is a great way to stay in touch, you know. Also, when I put stuff on YouTube or whatever, you know, I always read all the comments. I try to answer them all, uh, oh, which yeah. is not not always possible, of course. No. You know? and, and also, <laughs> you, you gotta be you gotta be like funny every time. And at some point, you you made a joke like three times, and it's like, can I make it a fourth time? No, I gotta think of something <laughs> new, you know. <laughs> Right. Well, you have experience making lots of jokes with your brother, right? Is it? Gjelt? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Gjelt. Yeah, Gjelt. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You pronounce that again. I think you did it right. I said, I said Gjelt, but is it Gjelt? It's, it's, you have to clear your throat. <laughs> Be careful for, for everything that's in front of you. <laughs> but it's, it's like every it's vocal Gjelt. exercise it's, ever. Right? It's, fit it's, and it's, it's better. <laughs> It's a terrible language, Dutch. I hope uh, Dutch people will be watching. They will hate me now, but it's, it's uh, especially to, for singing, you know, it's like, <laughs> well, like in the South, they have a, a <laughs> that's nicer. So you oh, can also whoa. say Hjalt if you want. Hjalt. Oh, that sounds very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me, I was in, a, in Dresden in Germany for okay. a year. Yeah, yeah. And I remember when I was trying to get the German down, and I'd already studied it before, but, and then did intensive courses in Dresden. Yeah. I was working at the Opera House there, but some of the friends from the area, um, they had given me a book at one point that I think was the Hessliche... Uh, Sprache or something like that. Something okay, like, like, okay, the most yeah. hated language okay. talking about how awful German I, I, was. <laughs> I love German. I love German. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's really good. like like Rammstein, you know. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> or Kraftwerk, you know. Or uh, no, it's it's very effective. I, I I love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's amazing structure in the language as well. Um, you know, uh, Kirk and I, we've been talking a lot about what language we're going to actually teach. Our okay, child yeah, yeah. first, yeah, right? yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, so this is a very a very pertinent discussion right now. And also, um, machen wir machen wir das Interview in Deutsch dann. Das ist kein Problem. Yeah, we can. Okay. Oh, good. See you. Good. Is good. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, it's not as good as it used to be. I will okay, say. I'm, okay. I'm a little bit out of practice. Um, but. Uh, yes. <laughs> so you're for, in for the, the Netherlands, Dutch. though, right? You're right. Yeah. For the Dutch, it's easy. 
It's it's very yeah. close to German. So, so. S- yeah, it, it's such an interesting. Um, when I was going back and forth at one point um, for a couple of events, I it was almost like I could understand a Dutch person when they were it's speaking. It's true. It's true. That that's the big thing, you know. My girlfriend the same. She can understand it, but speaking is a whole other thing. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. a difficult oh. language. It's a difficult mm-hmm. language. Yeah. Don't even try. It will hurt your throat as well with all the chs, you know? Right. Maybe it promotes healthy, harsh vocal creation. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe. That's true. That's true. Right. All right. But you don't don't want to hear Dutch music, Dutch (laughs) folk folk songs. It's like... I like... Your music is good. It's not Dutch. (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, that that would not be a compliment. Oh, no, I'm too evil now. I'm too evil now. I, I love Holland. I love Holland. I, yeah. <laughs> it's good to live here, especially for, for a recluse like me. You know, it's quiet and it's flat yeah. and, uh, and yeah. uh, nice, nice people. And uh, no, it's okay here. Fairly pleasant weather overall too, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh-huh. not it's never extreme. You know, I, I hate extremes like too cold or too hot. Mm-hmm. So no, the weather is fine. The weather is fine. I live close to the sea, so it's a Ooh. it's a sea climate, and it's no, it's a, that's good. Yeah, yeah. And I, I noticed that you had a had your tea. Going. Yep, there so we I, go. To your coffee. That's there, the question. Okay, oh, okay, cheers! Okay. Cheers! Yep. Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> it's Abbey Road, as you can see, the Beatles, of course. Yes. Yes. And yep. what kind of what kind of of uh, uh, beverage are you drinking? Is it uh, I, 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 tea. I, I like some <laughs> spicy shit because yeah the thing is not so nice about um 13 years ago i lost my sense of smell i was it's, reading uh, about that it's, yeah, okay. it's called yeah it's it's a it's a side effect of covid right now i think yeah and um uh, it's called anosmia uh-huh. And it was just a night, I was a night out in Amsterdam and it was partying and it was all good and I uh, spent the night in a hotel and I woke up and breakfast, I was like, I don't, I don't taste anything. It's crappy because eating is the most, it's most more important than music. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> to say it. I shouldn't say it in this interview, but eating was everything for me you know? and, <laughs> and, and cooking and, and stuff. And, and I had breakfast and uh, all these nice things, you know. Uh, continental breakfast i think a uh, typical english breakfast with, with mm-hmm. bacon and stuff and i didn't taste anything and that uh, i was like oh well maybe i'm having a cold you know and and i at, at, after two weeks i went to the hospital and said no you had a cold mm-hmm. but um the virus went uh, on the the wrong part of your nose because that's where your your uh, smell is mm-hmm. um and it's gone and it's gone and if it doesn't come back within a year it will never come back and it's uh, it's it's crappy. It's crappy because yeah. uh, you you would say it's just your smell, but it's also the flavor. So um, your taste is actually uh, on your on your palate and on your tongue. Mm-hmm. So your taste is uh, a bit uh, bitter, sweet, salty, and sour. That's your taste. And your nose, your smell, gives it the flavor. So if I would drink coffee, it would just be bitter. You know, oh. <laughs> and and oh. that's not good. So I would not taste the coffee. I would just taste bitter. And um, wow, it's it's a very long answer to to say that I like spicy tea because at least something is happening. You know, I don't yeah. I don't I don't get it, but I get the spiciness. And I put a whole lemon in every tea. You know, uh-huh. and that brightens like, it up a little bit. Or... Yeah, well, it's uh-huh. it's it's I, I I get the sourness. You know, and sourness, bitterness is, is crappy. Too salty is crappy. Too sweet is crappy. But I like sour. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, spicy tea with loads of lemon. <laughs> so, like, tang and pop is what we need, right? <laughs> That's it. That's it. Okay. Wow. So, then do you have the sensation of the spice more than anything? Does it make you kind of tingle in your mouth? Uh, well, that that's the same, you know, that the, the uh-huh. taste is, that's uh, all okay. It's just the, the smell that's gone. So the flavor that's gone. Uh-huh. And, and this gives me something, you know, at least it gives me something. It's the mm-hmm. same when I, when I eat food, uh, you know, I won't taste it anymore. So the first few weeks of the first year was terrible. Really, yeah. I, I got, I got into a depression, really a, a real depression where I just I'm like, sorry. 
it's over, you know, <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, and um, at some point I started, you know, making the best out of it. So I, I'm a total f uh, nuts freak. So I buy all the nuts that, that you can think of. Uh -huh. uh, um, and I have them all. Uh, uh, when I eat, I have them next to me. And everything I eat, you know, if I eat vegetables, I throw nuts on it. <laughs> I throw nuts <laughs> on everything. So at least you've got something to do, you know, you've got that crunchy crunchy things and the texture. Um, so yeah yeah the, te the texture the texture becomes really important of everything mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. um what about so wasabi? i learned to live with it do you like wasabi? I, oh loads loads <laughs> I, I buy them from a chinese shop like like this huge big big wasabi things and i put them in everything yeah it's <laughs> it's i love it oh yes <laughs> nice I sometimes do a, like a soft palate stretch where I get people to put their hands in their mouth and go back and stretch their soft palate out to try and get it up a little higher for, you know, if it's dropping too much when they're singing or something. Okay, okay. And uh, one of my students coined it a wasabi stretch because when you get the right spot, it almost feels like you got a little bit of wasabi back there and you're like, whoo, okay, oh. I'm going to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, I always, I always get to, <laughs> yeah, I always put too much, you know, whatever, and I always get the teary eyed. Mm -hmm. thing you like that hits you you know like oh, oh damn it yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's good that's all right good. yeah so yeah. are you allowed to cook for other people uh i, I would never do that no i would <laughs> no I, it would be terrible it would be awful i just cook for myself and uh, <laughs> uh i yeah it uh, no no i i would not be allowed for sure <laughs> Yeah, that's fun. And also, I, I, I don't eat uh, sugar and salt anymore. So in a way, it's kind of healthy that this oh, yeah. happened to me, the Nosmi thing. Because if I eat sugar now, it's it's way too sweet. Or mm -hmm. if I eat salt, it's way too too salty. So, uh, yeah, I'm super healthy now. <laughs> Do you think that affected how you approach music at all? Because a lot of times we talk about a, a passage being really sweet or something. Yeah, um, and we tend to relate it to certain flavors or or smells because you know there are other ways to describe hearing, but a lot of times we we'll relate that to different senses. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like do you feel like that's affected your music? I hope, I truly hope not. It <laughs> it tr it definitely uh, affected my inspiration because that was ah. a dark. It was a dark year. It was a dark year, and and it was I was doing the album zero one zero one one zero zero one normal title. <laughs> Sorry about that title. <laughs> Your titles are um, very regular. <laughs> <laughs> and it it was in the middle in the middle of that album. I still remember I had the uh, I had all these these happy songs in the beginning, and uh, I got my depression, and uh, <laughs> all these dark songs started surfacing. So that's like a became a, a very weird album and uh, but no I had no inspiration for a long time and uh, um, of course you know thanks to music um, it came back you know and and mm -hmm. I, I, I learned to live with it now I really learned to live with it and I have to say I, I still taste like a little bit I got like this really old cheese and I especially have it come from someplace far away <laughs> like four year old goat's cheese and I get something oh. from that. So Oh, that would be potent. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is. It is. It almost walks away if I'm not careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Okay. Well, you know, I want to talk a little bit about the Beatles. I because I mean I saw this go by too. And a I always about... want to talk about the Beatles. Right. Okay, so what's your favorite Beatles song? Uh, Day in the Life, for sure. <gasps> ah, no, 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 not for sure. And the War. It's, it's always a fight between <laughs> those two. It, it would definitely be a John Lennon thing. Uh -huh. So it, it could also be uh, Strawberry Fields. But mm. yeah, may, maybe I'm the War. It's, it's it's such a scary song, you know. It's it's uh, as a kid, it was scary with all these backward noises, you know. And uh, I am the Act Man. Woo woo! It, it was. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I never thought about it being scary. I thought it was fun and, and it was fun, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. I guess if I was much younger when I'd heard it, it might have been scary. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Cause cause how old when would that have been? Seventy oh. sixty seven? I, I would have uh -huh. been seven years old. So okay. <laughs> it's an yeah. impressionable age. So right, very <laughs> yeah. Now for me it was scary. And also a day in the life, you know, with that orchestra building up. It was like 
very, very special to me. And and yeah, John Lennon's voice. I mean, if mm-hmm. I hear that voice, if even if I hear him speak, you know, it's uh, the sound of his voice and his his uh, Liverpool pronunciation. And uh, um, yeah, my favorite singer of all time, definitely. Not not technically, you know, it's not a technical singer. I mean, technically, of course, Paul McCartney was was much better. But but the voice of John Lennon is uh, I don't know I don't know yeah. what you think. Um, man, I feel like it. I think you can get more feeling sometimes out of a voice that isn't as technical. It's true. So um, so yeah, I think that there's there are times and places for each. Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> that, that's a good thing that you said there. It's true. Yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I hope I hope that also goes for my singing because I'm not a <laughs> technical singer at all. You know, I to- sing totally out of tune. But uh, yeah, I, I try to to put that emotion into to kind of uh, hide the fact that I can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> right, like I can't sing. I'm gonna put a lot of message in there. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> That's it. A lot of pathos. A lot of passion. Yeah. Right, and you. I was reading that. You first started singing in a band as a backup vocalist, right? It was uh, Bovine, I think, was the band in 1980. You were playing guitar and singing backup vocalist. Uh, it's a bit different. The band a bit? Is okay. Called, uh, Correct uh, me. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, firstly, uh-huh. it's Bodine. No, Bovine. Not Bovine. Not, Bovine. Bovine yeah. Not like a cow, but <laughs> <No>. Bovine. <laughs> <laughs> Bodine, yeah. Okay. Uh, they, they were my favorite band in Holland. And they recorded this album with an amazing singer. Like, imagine a cross between Paul Rogers and David Coverdale. I mean, that's how good he okay. was. Uh, I loved that album. And um, uh, the drummer was actually the drum teacher of the drummer of my own band. Mm-hmm. And I, I once went to, they, they rehearsed somewhere in a, in a cellar, I think. And I saw this band and I said, oh my God, you know, the first band I see somewhere in a cellar in Holland is like 10 times better than than I, I ever could be, you know. It really wow. hit me. Uh, and uh, at some point, uh, they lost that singer and they were looking for another singer. And I was shrewd. I was like, let's let's do audition as a singer. And I knew Ooh. I wouldn't be good enough, you know. But mm-hmm. I felt they could use an extra guitar player because those were the days of, of Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, you know, double guitar Mm-hmm, attack mm-hmm. and they just had one guitar player and they were kind of bluesy and I thought I have to push them a little bit more in the metal direction <laughs> with two guitars so I, I did audition as a, as a singer and it, it wasn't good enough but on the spot I started composing songs I started making melodies and they liked those melodies said that those are good melodies and and I said well um, uh, I happen to bring my guitar you know it's in my car <laughs> shall, shall I get <laughs> It's really how it went, and I, uh, yeah, I plugged in the guitar, and and uh, they heard this double guitar, and I learned their songs really well. Um, so I got the job as a guitar player, but uh, obviously not as a singer. <laughs> did you so, occasionally sing backups, or was there? I, I, I did. I always did the high voice in in the in the oh. choruses. Yeah, 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 I did. Nice. <laughs> but you shouldn't hear it on its own. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can, I can, I, I could do those high stuff uh, in the past, you know, and I could, could do harmonies, but uh, now no leads. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard you a little bit here and there, right? There's some little things, and you, you, you still can hold your own, I think. <laughs> uh, people often think I'm humble and like, ah, oh, you know, he's very humble. I'm not humble, you know, because rock operas, I'm the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm, laughs> Producers, I'm the best. Uh, picking good singers, I'm the best, you know. But singing, uh, uh, but I have to say, I, I do like the sound of my my voice um, like when that. it's when it's processed in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> when you've got a little auto- bit of plugs auto-tune. on it, right? <laughs> <laughs> a little little bit of lot, yeah. Yeah. So I'm um, I'm really curious. I was also reading about your background some, and I noticed. You played with a bunch of bands and um, inspired by the Beatles and these kinds of things, but I don't understand how you learned music, where you started digesting it. I'd read you don't have any, you didn't have any particularly formal music education, but it seems like it's something that you just loved that you started doing. So you can talk, can you talk to me a little bit about how 
that early development happened for you? Yeah, it's weird because no one in my my family uh, played instruments, and mm-hmm. I, I was just such a music freak, always stuck to the radio. <laughs> um, and I think no, it started. I, I started in a playback band. I think I was twelve years old, and it was seventy two. So those were the days of Alice Cooper and David Bowie, the glam rock, you know. Oh, yeah. And I, I loved glam rock. You know, the Sweet was my favorite <laughs> band ever. You know, with all the the long hair, and I loved it. So I was the singer in the in a, a cover, not a cover band, a playback band. So. Uh, in schools and we played a lot of schools actually so oh, so nice. they, they just played uh, the, uh, T-Rex or, or, or David Bowie or Alice Cooper in the speakers and we were acting <laughs> as if we were we were singing uh-huh. and um, a, a playback uh, and band versus a cover band so is this a um, uh, this is a band that plays songs you're not composing your own right you're no playing... no we were just acting as if my i mean my microphone was a piece of wood you know <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have guitars and drums it was just all fake and people loved it oh and god we, okay we were actually called the flying potatoes believe it or not i have no <laughs> idea why but we were the flying potatoes and uh, we played a lot of schools and it was cool and um, at some wow. point one of the older pupils came to me and he said uh, well um you know, it's all nice, this, this glam rock shit, you know, but listen to this. This is real music. And then he gave me uh, Made in Japan by Deep Purple. Uh, must oh. have been 72, 73. And I heard that and I was like, oh, okay, this is for me. And, uh, uh, and, and that's when I decided, okay, I got to learn to play guitar. So I... I bought some acoustic I didn't know the difference between acoustic and electric guitar mm-hmm. it's, it's it's so different now you google it and you and you get uh, uh, Steve Vai giving you guitar lessons or whatever you know mm-hmm. <laughs> not in those days you had to all figure it out my, yourself you know like electric yeah. guitar like do you put it, it like into a socket on the wall or whatever <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I really did not get it so uh, yeah, slowly it developed, and just I never had lessons or anything. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just, you know, listened to Blackmore and what what is he doing, and trying to find out what he does. And uh, but but basically, the first thing I did when I when I uh, got a guitar was uh, I think on day one I started composing. Uh, I, I had a song it was called Hiding Away. I think I don't know the only chords I knew. Uh, so that's, that's always been my passion, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I tried to become the best guitar player in the world, but then, you know, I saw the likes of Momstein and, and Blackmore and, and Steve Vai and, and it was like, okay, <laughs> no way. <laughs> Maybe leave that to someone else, but you, that's, that's so fascinating. You must've developed such a good ear as well at that point to be able to hear something and then figure it out on a guitar. Uh, yeah, it's true. If I think if I would have learned stuff, uh, I don't know. I would have my music would have been more normal, <laughs> I <laughs> guess. <laughs> uh, or, or or maybe you know I, I've been I've been a difficult person always. You know, you you introduce me as a nice guy. I am not. You know, I'm, I'm only nice if I get my way. <laughs> so <laughs> so I uh, I was always against. The grain, you know, I, I always uh, wanted to do things different. So I'm sure if I would have had a guitar teacher, like uh, you have to play it like this, I would have said, no, I'd, I'll, I'll do it my way. I'll do it different. So so I think that's the good thing of me never having had lessons, that I developed yeah. my, my own style, my own music. Yeah. Uh, and, and the downside is that it just takes longer. It takes ah. longer. Yeah, that's a really good point. It tends to take yeah. a little bit longer in that way. There's not a, a system that you can go through that has been tried that you would know, okay, this part next. Right. It's, it's figured right. out as you go. Right, you figure it out. And, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, looking back, you never know. If I would have had lessons, if I would know what I do, would, would it have been better or, or less? I don't know. But yeah. uh, basically, if I look back, I started Arion when I was 35. Uh, that's when I... W- was getting real success mm-hmm. so uh basically it, it took me <laughs> 35 years there to to get where i was i, I could not have done Arion when i was 20 i i just didn't have the knowledge and uh, that makes sense but it also yeah. i think i think it's a really good point to make that 
this path works for you. It works really, really well. It, it works for me, and I have uh -huh. no idea if it would work for others. You know, I so often <laughs> get get mails mails from from fans like, "How would I do this? And how would I do that?" Uh, I don't know. I really. It, it depends on you. It, it's different mm -hmm. for every person, and. Uh, also, yeah. if I if I get mails from fans saying like, uh, "Hey, uh, I have a good job, you know, but uh, I love playing guitar. Should I give up my job?" It's uh, just you uh, asking that question. Is like, no, don't don't give up your job. You know, <laughs> right. uh, it, it should be uh, it should be your your calling. It should be your quest. You know, there should be no other option. For me, there was no other option. It, it, it's music or nothing, you know, or a jump off the roof. And mm -hmm. I maybe had a job or two, but uh, yeah, I, I had the luck that I, uh, at, at how old was I, 18, 19, 20, I got into a professional band immediately and started touring and stuff. So yeah, I never worked an honest day in my life. <laughs> <laughs> For <laughs> I, man, musicians work hard, though we work hard. Uh, we yeah. We, would you want to call it work, though, if you enjoy it? I don't know. I always, I've always felt like I. Sometimes I think people have a negative connotation for work if they don't like work, but yeah, uh, I think. Um, I think work has a very positive connotation. Okay, okay. Let's <laughs> call it work. Let's call yeah. it work. So. <laughs> Yeah, sounds way better. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like, oh, <laughs> I'm going to go make something and put it out into the world. That's cool. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's very fun. In those early days, are there are there any particular songs um, that you performed or released that you felt were particularly influential for you or was like a maybe a turning point or a stamp of success? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you mean songs of other... Other bands. Yeah, kind of. I'm singing in that that early band phase. Um, maybe you mentioned like 18 till I'd say 18 to 30 or something. You know, not not quite okay. at the Arian days okay. yet. Uh -huh. uh, well, uh, the big turning point at some point was was definitely uh, as I mentioned, Made in Japan, Deep Purple. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, Stargazer of of uh, Rainbow. You know, mm. with with the holy <laughs> trinity of uh, Ronnie James Dio and uh, Richard Blackmore and Cozy Powell. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. It can't get any <laughs> better than that. <laughs> so yeah, Stargazer, uh, Kashmir, Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. uh, th those those two, you know, th <laughs> they are they they are like. Uh, I'm really jealous of that, you know. I would never reach reach that level. That's uh, I always try on on each album. There is actually a song where the working title is Stargazer. <laughs> on each album, I try it again, and I, I never even get close, you know. This time you just have Star One, right? <laughs> it's all. It sounds the same. Yeah. Yeah, it's close. It's close. It's not the same, but close. <laughs> yep. That's fun. Okay, so. Uh, I also wanted to know um, how many instruments did you pick up along the way? <laughs> uh, it always sounds cool, you know. And I'm a multi instrumentalist, you know. I know. And people I know, people right? call me a multi instrument. You don't want to hear me play piano. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, play keys pretty well. I can play. No, no, no. I, I can. I can. I know where the A minor is, and I know where the chords ah. are. But if if I had to play three chords in succession, you know, I really have to. Okay, I put that finger there and that. No, it's it's. I'm not a not. I I can play all the instruments a little bit, mm -hmm. and but most important is, I know how they should sound, and that's why I play them myself. Ah, you know? like like the old, point. yeah, like the old synthesizers. Yeah. I just love the sound of the old synth and I know how to program and, and I know how to get the best sounds of it. And there are way better <laughs> players than me, but they maybe they would use like a, a new digital sound that I don't like. So so basically my my um I'm very good at uh making sounds, making mm -hmm. good sounds. And that's basically why I play most of the instruments myself. Like I'm not the best bass player in the world, you know, I'm not Geddy Lee or John Entwistle, but uh, I know how to get a great sound out of my bass, and that's why I play the bass myself. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah, multi instrumentalist is too much honor, uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's really accurate though. If it's uh, and it's important to know every time you're talking about it, you're saying, "I know what it should sound like," and I think that goes back to that developing ear for you, mm-hmm. younger. If you know what something should sound like, then you have a really good idea of how to craft it as a whole. True, true. I've 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 always known what a good production is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I bought albums because of the production or I mm-hmm. did not buy albums because of a bad production mm-hmm. um, I've, I've ho- always had an ear for that and I'm not sure do you think you can learn that I'm not sure I mean you have classes yeah. to learn it but I, I have no idea if you can learn it or if you just have it yeah I definitely I definitely think that that is something a person can learn but I also think some people have it more than others. Um, but it's true. It's true. Yeah. yeah. I, I think um, I think a, a lot of times people don't understand why they like a song, and it's because the production is really good, not necessarily because the sort of underlying compositional foundation is really good. Right, really right, simple. right, right, um, yeah. And I think it's very interesting yeah. once you start pointing out to people, oh, well, you hear how that thing is really clear in there or how – Maybe the sound has been positioned in here as well, or um, you know how these things. This one has its own space carved out, and that one has its own space carved out. That that's it, right? That's it. Yeah, yeah. And once they start realizing that, that's partly why they like it because they have a more clear picture of it. I think it definitely it, changes <laughs> the way they listen to things. It it could be if I look at my favorite albums, you know they. They were always the better sounding albums. And when I was young, I didn't mm-hmm. know, you know. I maybe thought yeah. it was like better compositions or better singers, but really, it was all all about sound. So, well, uh, I have a total. We're going to hold it this way with the interview. I have a question about that um, and your opinion on it. Uh, a lot of times, when I've seen more modern production being done in studios, I'll see that they're essentially trying to make that really fat line that. They're pushing up the sound right here. Yeah, I hate it. Yeah, I was wondering because in classical music, uh, you know, there's such a huge variety of dynamics. Right, it can't be more dynamic. Yeah, and I've been very curious, and I've been told, well, people are more attracted to having a loud sound all the time. Yes, you can have some dips in it, but it's better if you know you have more solid peaks, so it is like this in the waveform instead of you know all the little things in it. Does yeah. that look okay? Is that yeah, a good yeah, way yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, beautiful, you're a beautiful waveform. I haven't <laughs> seen a more beautiful waveform in my life. <laughs> so do you think, um, is that something you think about much when you're producing Yeah, your own music? very much, because mm-hmm. it was the loudness wars, and I yeah. was fighting those wars, you know. Uh, <laughs> the, band, the band next door was louder than us. It can't be louder, you know. Can you make us louder? And and you're just yeah. limiting and compressing and the music get flat and I was guilty yeah. you know it, it, it was in the eighties uh, late eighties um, you know people started discovering the, the, the digital stuff but not knowing mm-hmm. how to use it yet Sa- same mm-hmm. thing you know a drum sample sounds better than the real drum snare so yes let's use samples and I was guilty as hell you know I, I went along in the loudness wars. Uh, but but it's it's totally stupid, you know. It totally flattens out your music. And like you said earlier, you know, your your mix should be transparent and it should be dynamic, mm-hmm. um, especially with my music, because because my music is so dynamic. Uh, yeah. Uh, people often call it uh, it's oh it's prog metal, you know. But if 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 you look at an album like Electric Castle, my album. Once, really, with with a stopwatch, I was checking, like, how much of it is really heavy. Uh, Well, firstly, I found out that 50% of it has no drums. (laughs) And of that 50%, 35% doesn't even have guitars. So, yeah, for me, dynamics are are, uh, extremely important. You know, it's... Mm -hmm. it's, If this thick line, you know, it's... uh, 
yeah, I, I, but I think people are finding out that it's not good. Um, basically, you know, you have these compilation albums coming out with magazines and uh, mm -hmm. there are all these new bands on it. And there you want to be the loudest. Because, <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, it's the way it goes. You hear all these loud songs, you hear a soft song, it just sounds less. It's like, uh, yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's dangerous. But, it doesn't uh, grab the attention as much. It doesn't grab the attention, really. And I... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's it's an easy trap to fall into. But I think people are discovering now that it it doesn't have to be this. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> this is squished. <laughs> That's the yeah, plan. Yeah. 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 yeah I th I think it's gonna be so interesting to see how that develops also in different genres and um, you know where it, where that might go to. I'm I'm really curious to watch it at least. And yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I think in in anything that's more progressive that that tends to have a lot more flexibility as to absolutely um, yeah where you might go yeah yeah I think someone like Stephen Wilson was one of the first like hey don't do that you know mm -hmm. just just let it breathe and and give it a lot of space and uh, and that opened a lot of people's eyes so that's good yeah 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 it's it's interesting um, I kind of talking about genres. I'm really curious about rock opera or metal opera as a genre because mm -hmm. <laughs> my mind yeah. goes, okay, well, in what way is it rock? And in what way is it opera? Or, you know, what, what are the elements that you think um, are required for a song to be classified or an album to be classified like that? You're, you're the master of this. So what do you think i i started it no no <laughs> uh well my biggest inspiration my biggest influence is she's guy superstar i mean oh, uh -huh. a, a, as a kid when i heard that like uh, every time i look at you i don't understand it's like oh my i, I know all the words i know every word in that in, 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 in that uh i mean that's that's for me still the ultimate rock opera mm -hmm. um I think uh, I may have been one of the first to uh, mix mix uh, rock operas or and, and prog and metal, make like a combination yeah. of those three. Uh, I know there are bands who did it before me, like like Queensrÿche uh, with with uh, uh, Mind Crime and uh, mm -hmm. Sabotage and, and bands like that. Um, but I think I, I, I took it more extreme, and I think so, yeah. yeah. What what are uh, the guidelines for for rock operas? Yeah, well, you have to, you need an ongoing story, mm -hmm. uh, different characters reacting to each other, <laughs> um, lots of dynamics. Um, yeah. What do you have a song that you think was would fit as your first? Uh, I guess opera is usually, it's a conglomeration of songs. So yeah. would it be your first? rock aria <laughs> you know do you have a, a specific moment when you feel like you actually achieved that sound or for myself yeah yeah and your music um I, i've always wanted to do it um in the bands i was in in the uh -huh. in this uh, 70s 80s and 90s but they were rock bands you know and i remember once i made a song about uh, the sirens cry of the sirens it was called and it was this whole story about Ulysses, you know, conquering mm -hmm. the, the sirens. And um, it had lots of lyrics. And uh, and the singer, he was he was Bon Scott, you know, and David B. Ross. And yeah, you know, on stage and putting beer on his head and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, and and I still remember we played at Bark Pop for, for a half a million people. And it was TV and a half a million people. It was a free wow. festival and Dutch people wow. like free, so oh, yeah. <laughs> there's yeah, a lot of, of people coming. <laughs> and um, it was also filmed and uh, for TV. And that song came, Car of the Sirens. And he, uh, each time he went to the set list because he had no idea what the next song was. And he was like, oh, Cry of the Sirens, that crappy song. <laughs> <laughs> in front of all those people and that's when i decided like okay let's not do that in this band so at some point i stopped with the bands and i started doing my own thing um with, with the first Arion album um uh the final experiment mm -hmm. which was basically my my first step into the whole rock opera thing uh, i i i uh, uh 
I sold my house, or rather, uh, my father sold the house, so I had time, uh, money to invest in it. And uh, it's, 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 yeah, it, it's kind of sketchy. <laughs> the first, the first album, you know, mm-hmm. like the same character is is played by different characters. It doesn't make sense at all, you know. So uh-huh. I, I, I still had to learn a lot, but, but, yeah. It, that that would be my first venture into the the rock opera thing. Perfect, right? So then it really for you it really started then with Arion. Um, did I do? Uh, I, I tried stuff like that before in the band, as I said, mm-hmm. which <laughs> was another success. <laughs> uh, then you got the whole thing, you know, where where uh, uh, the crunch music was coming up with Nirvana uh, and yeah. Jam. And yeah. they they totally messed everything up, of course, because we were like <laughs> like a hair metal '80s band, you know. And at that time, was over, and it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing, you know. It was nice while it lasted the '80s, but it was good that it Nirvana put an end to that, you know. Uh, I still remember hearing uh, "Smells Like Teen Spirit." I, I remember I was trying on pants in a shop, and uh, they played. I heard it like in this shop, mm-hmm. smells like teen spirits. And it was like, oh my God, what is this? So uh, for me, it was a good, good thing, you know, the whole grunge period. But it made it hard for me as a, as a musician. Because you can try to ride that wave too, but you know, it has to be in your blood, which it wasn't for me. So, mm-hmm. so, I, so in the 90s, I was totally lost. I, I did a, a solo album. Uh, called Pools of Sorrow, Ways of Joy, which is a Beatles quote, of course. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that sounds familiar. Where's that from? Yeah. Right. Pools of sorrow, waves of joy are drifting through my open mind. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Across the universe. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I lost the plot. Where was I? Oh, you were writing I was. Solo I was album. all uh-huh. over the place. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, my solo album. Uh, I made a solo album and... Uh, uh, actually on the basis uh, of, of a country song. I was totally lost and for fun I, I made a, I wrote a country song on the midnight train and, it, uh, and I got a record co- deal on the basis of that song. So, wow. uh, so the, I started recording the album. Of course, all the other songs were like totally different, like Pink Floyd and then stuff like that. And mm-hmm. Yeah, the the record label boss, he was like, what's happening? What's happening? Um, So, yeah, that was my my first attempt at doing some Pink um, (laughs) Floyd-ish rock opera kind of thing. Yeah, I wouldn't know if you want to, would call The Wall a rock opera. Not really. It's more like a concept album than a a rock rock opera. Yeah, concept. But I'm also, it's so funny because you're talking about a lot of things that are so new to me at the same time, right? I, I didn't grow up with rock or, or mm-hmm. grunge. I I think I did hear Smells Like Teen Spirit on the radio because I remember that that riff as well. Mm-hmm. But it's really been through the channel that I've been exposed to a lot of this. Right, right. Oh, it. that must be so cool. I'm so jealous of you. <laughs> it you really can is still cool. discover. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I saw you like discovering Dio. I mean, how oh my gosh. <laughs> beautiful. How beautiful must that be, you know? Right? And how For sad f- that he's not here anymore. Ugh. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For me, it was uh, uh, Love Is All. I don't know. Do you know Love Is All? I don't think I know that it's, one. No. Uh, oh, you have to check it out. It was the first time I heard Dio. Oh. Uh, it was sort of like a rock opera thing that Roger Glover, the bass player of Deep Purple, did. And it's called The Butterfly Ball. It's very cute, you know, with froggies and then <laughs> this animation. <laughs> and uh, actually, Dio was the froggy. <laughs> and he had he had three songs on the album. You have to check it out. You have to check it out. Oh, okay. The song is called "Love Is All," mm-hmm. and uh, I, I and it was just a cartoon, so you didn't see the the singers. Oh. So they, they they showed this cartoon on on the TV, and and there was Dio singing, and I thought it was Roger Glover, you know, the bass player in the group. I thought, oh. my God, this guy can sing like well, that. Why did he get a voice? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was Dio, and it was the first time I heard Dio. And oh my God, you know, it's instant it's, love. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally, mm-hmm. totally. He's he's been my ah, uh, he's probably uh, in his style my favorite singer of all time, definitely. He's a, he's amazing. It's, yes, it's extraordinary. I I can't get over yeah. all of the little 
amazing things that he does. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yeah. So, yeah I think at, at some point, I, I do prefer him in the early uh, period um, mm -hmm. with, with Rainbow and, and with Black Sabbath. At some point when he was doing solo, he started be become a bit too metal. You know, with ah, all uh -huh. the, and, and the, rah, rah, he started the growling a little bit. I don't know if you uh -huh. feel feel that too. It, it's you know, I it's so interesting because um, a lot of the things I've been listening to, and we have to we do this very careful sheltering essentially of my ears. If I think that we might do something on the channel later, because if I, I want that to be a very authentic first time listen, mm -hmm. people know. I think you. Like, yeah, yeah. People will just know if it isn't. Right, and, right, yeah. Um, but so, you know, it's been interesting because I haven't had a real, I would say, progressive listen of okay. earlier to later. Okay, understand, understand. But I've yeah. heard probably more things that are a little bit later because of the audio quality on the video content. And I, one of the things that I feel from later versus earlier, especially, um, especially when he was getting on up there is I think he becomes so it, like the generosity that he starts with, it just starts to flow over and he has, um, it has such loving expression. Mm -hmm. um, there's, it's just, it's interesting. I know that the, the voice and the style, I'm not sure stylistically, you know, how to compare the two, but the, just the performance and the way he seems to embrace and essentially say, I love you to the crowd every single time he sings when, yeah, yeah, especially yeah. when he's older. I think that grew and it was, it's a, yeah. it's very touching. Cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah. I feel very, um, very impressed by him. I, I keep telling opera singers, go listen to him. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. And, and he's a natural. I don't know if you know his yeah. very early stuff, like Ronnie and the Prophets and stuff. No. And it's, it's, oh, well, it's, 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 if you hear it, it's like Frank Sinatra kind of tunes. It's like a <laughs> Cranny River. You know, it's, it, it's what? Oh, already God. cool. It's like tiny little Ronnie. Well, he was always <laughs> tiny little Ronnie, of course, but, mm -hmm. but really young and his voice was like really, really high. Uh, um, you, you have to check it out. It's it's very cool to hear it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. I can't imagine him singing like a little Frank Sinatra. -ish. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, that's fun. that's actually the music he listens to. Yeah, that's the music he grew up on. Mm -hmm. I, I did a tour once with uh, his his drummer uh, uh, Vinnie Appice, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, that's that was was playing in his dressing room. You know, it was Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like uh, like uh, Black Sabbath or or, or uh, Megadeth or whatever. You uh -huh. know, it was uh, Frank Sinatra. Well, oh. it's it's lodge, you know. That's the kind kind of music he he grew up on. And, uh, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, and that's actually the, more of the kind of music I grew up on too. That kind of tells you where. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, more of that, and um, yeah, I was I had a lot of. Uh, acapella music um, okay so and a lot of classical too of course of course yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah it's very it's very interesting and like you said it's it's pretty amazing to yeah. be able to experience this as an adult and uh your music uh really i because i listened to arian fairly early in in sort of channel progression Mm -hmm. And I remember it just going through a bunch of singers that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say uh, the day that the world, the day that the world shut down. Breaks that down, one? yeah. I think it was that one or it might have been another it, It's one. the one you, you were reacted uh -huh. on, yes. Yeah. yeah, and it just went through so many singers that were fantastic one after another. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> my really big question for you <laughs> yeah. is... How do you find so many good singers? They're not even singers that are necessarily really big. Like, uh -huh. I remember the moment that Michael Mills came on and was singing this one oh, zero yes. one zero. It was so oh, yes. amazing. I was like, who uh, is I know. this guy? I know. Right? I know. <laughs>
Um, well, I, I'm subscribed to a lot of magazines. Uh -huh. And um, uh, I, I have this this list with me, and, and uh, every time I read something about a band that could be interesting or a singer, I write his name down. I, I, yeah, I have the list here, or whatever. Uh, and wow. then in the evening, I go to YouTube and I check it all out. Just, just, and and then in the sidebar, I, I uh, each day at least for an hour, I check out bands. And wow. um, I, I think it's it's one of my my talents to discover uh, yes. talent. Um, think, yes, because yes. Um, Michael Mills, I saw him do a, a, a cover of Jethro Tull. He was singing Thick mm -hmm. as a Brick. And I just heard it and I was like within, I know it within two words. You know, of people often send me singers. I know within one line if I'm going to like it or not. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Michael Mills, I was blown away immediately, you know. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> this guy can do everything. Really, and uh, truly he, he truly is a multi-instrumentalist, you know. <laughs> That's why I look up to these guys, you know, because they are so much better than me. And, and, and I try to promote them every chance I get because uh, he so deserves it. So. And then you build up essentially really great relationships with a lot of these singers. I see them coming back in lots of albums as well. What do you do to keep your singers happy? <laughs> Pay them a lot of money. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, what do I do to... Yeah. Uh, I've worked with people that I don't want to work with before and people that I do want to work with before. And if two, I feel two of my... I had the same. But I have Bird. to get a uh -huh. yeah. I have to get a good feeling from a singer. If I if if you know um, if I have the feeling that he only does it for or she does only does it for the money mm. uh, or for being on Arion or whatever you know, I feel that immediately, and it just doesn't feel good. And uh, um, so I, I really have to like the person, and the person has to like the music, and. Uh, that's very important for me, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, at some point w when I was in bands, I was he terrible. I was a dictator. I was awful. I was awful to work with, you know, oh. uh, and, and, um, just cause I knew, you know, I knew that drama isn't good enough, you know, get out, <laughs> get a new one. And I was, <laughs> I was ruthless, you know, uh, -huh. uh, but at some point with Arion, uh, I, I just learned, you know, that that if you just if you're okay to everyone you treat everyone with respect and uh, uh, in the long run you're gonna win you know mm -hmm. that's uh, yeah it's just just uh, I, I just did a video on Bill and Ted's excellent adventure you know I can only quote them be excellent to each other <laughs> <laughs> there you go excellent there to each you other. go that's yeah. a that touches on one of the questions that I wanted to ask, which is what makes a good colleague? And I think there's your answer. Be excellent yeah. to each other. <laughs> Be excellent to each other. <laughs> Bill and Ted said it all there. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. That's yep. really great. And uh, when you're working with a, a singer or, or an instrumentalist too, um, but I'm thinking about that process of how you go back and forth do you send a guide track with lyrics for them to sing? Um, obviously, you're not working off of sheet music. So no. um, what, is the, what is the back and forth process look like for you? Uh, usually, uh, pre-corona, uh, I would sing guide vocals myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't sing in the range of these singers. You know, I can't sing a high B or whatever. So I would sing everything an octave lower. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and and double it so it sounds at least a little bit nice. Uh, so uh, that guide vocal, my guide vocal, actually mm -hmm. goes to the guide vocalist, <laughs> oh. who sings it uh, if necessary. Who sings it in his own way, you know, in the in the uh -huh. right octave, and um, or uh, or I send my own uh, guide. Sometimes I send my own guide to singers, and I tell them. Mm -hmm. Listen, this is the melody, plus, but I always tell them, please, please do it your own way. Mm -hmm. uh, don't listen to it too often. Just listen to it once or twice to get, get an idea what, what, uh, what the song is about, what the melody is about. And uh, pre-corona, I would always fly them over to my studio. Mm -hmm. So like 90% of the singers you hear on my albums uh, were all done in my studio. So uh, they come here and... Uh, 
uh, I ask them because I am a fan of them, you know, and mm -hmm. so I, I really always urge them to, to sing it their way and, and change stuff, you know, yeah. change melodies, change lyrics. Uh, I don't mind, you know, as long as it gets better. And if it doesn't get better, you know, going to do it my way. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, of course, Corona ruined that a bit because yeah. I couldn't fly the singers over to my studio anymore. So, uh, so, so I had to get a really good guide vocalist, you know, to raise the bar. So uh -huh. the singer would get, uh, uh, would get, get a guide vocal. Um, uh, in this case, it's the guide vocal of uh, JC, who is in my ears, one of the best singers in, in Holland. Uh, big Dio fan. He's in a lot of tri Dio tribute fans. Oh, cool. And uh, and he really really raised the bar for the singers. You know, some of the singers, world class singers like Jolyn Turner or Jeff Scott Soto. You know, they said like, "Hey man, <laughs> I hear these guide vocals. What do you need me for?" <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Feel intimidated, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's good. You know, then they have to yeah. even perform better. So. That's true. But yeah, I prefer to have them in my own studio because then, and next to me, you know, not, not in some booth behind glass, they have to stand next to me. And uh, if it doesn't work out, we'll grab the guitar and uh, let's try this. Yeah, that's cool. Let's try it like this and let's change this and let's do a harmony on that. And uh, basically I had to learn that because in, in the beginning of Arion, I wanted things my way, you know, this is my melody and mm -hmm. you have to sing it. But then you work with guys like Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden. Yeah. And, 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 you know, he comes in the studio and he does it his way. Yeah? And you're not going to uh -huh. say like, uh, Bruce, I want you to change. No, you know, you're like, oh my God, this is so much better than, than I uh, uh, envisioned it. So, um, yeah, uh, 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 during the way I, I, I found out that uh, you have to give them freedom, you know, to get a better mm. result. Yes. But, okay, so... When you were, let's go back to that like 101 thing with Michaels. I remember in the video you had said all I, I sent to him was the lyrics 10 or 001, or, right? Yeah, yeah. And said go crazy. And then he sent you things back. So is that a good example of that freedom to just go explore and, and make something? Well, absolutely. And Michael Mills, you should not restrict him. You know, I didn't want uh -huh. to give him anything. I just gave him the lyrics. I think, do you think you can do that? And he said, yes. I know yeah. I can do this, and I would, I would never guide him. You know, I, I, I'm sure if I, it would, it would be a shame. Uh -huh. You know, I would have guided him the wrong way. I would, I gave him like total, total freedom, and I knew that that it would be perfect. <laughs> so, and do you feel like that? That's something that, as you've gotten to know singers better, do you get a pretty good sense right away of yeah. how much guidance? Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Because there are other, other singers. I have to guide them exactly. I have to tell them yeah. exactly what to sing, which is fine as well. You know, it's not, uh -huh. it's not good or bad. It's, it's fine as well, you know. Uh, so, but I, yeah, I learned that. I, I, I got that pretty soon. If a singer is in my studio, you no, know, should I just let him go for it? Like, like a singer like, like Jorn Lande. Uh, I mean, uh, um, you just have to let him go for it. You, know? <laughs> you should not guide him. Russell Allen, same thing. Uh, I'm sure you must have done Russell Allen uh, stuff. I mean, he's... A little, the stuff from you, but we actually are supposed to... Uh, okay, cool, yeah. We're yeah, supposed yeah. to do one coming up here really soon. Gotcha. Oh, that's cool. Cause, cause, <laughs> I cause know. He, yeah, he's one of the best in the world. You know, he's, he's level D.O. <laughs> This yeah. level deal, for sure. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited because yeah, yeah. of the little bits I've heard and, and other things. Yes. So. Yeah. So that's <laughs> not a guy. That's a guy you should. I have him in my studio and I give him some tips, you know, but um, he should do it on his own. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and yeah. Yeah. You introduced me as well to uh, Tommy Karavik. Karavik or Karivik? Or uh, I, I wouldn't know what the right <laughs> pronunciation is. He's I've probably worked on this before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's another singer. I'm, I was really curious because he has such a huge range. Oh, yes. Um, and has the ability to do those little tiny runs as well. I then. know. I know. Right? <laughs> They're so, amazing. Yeah. I, would you even write a run for him or would you just no. say embellish? <laughs> oh, no. Embellish. 
I would even say don't embellish too much. Because <laughs> 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 uh, no, he that's his strength, you know. So you should, uh -huh. you should let him go for it. You, you should not restrict a guy like that, you know. Yeah. Really, same thing. He gets my guide melodies. So maybe he listens to it once, uh, and he t he totally changes it, and he totally makes it his own. And sometimes he does go too far. I remember uh, that the first album he came to my studio so we could work on it together. But the other one, he sent me the tracks, and some tracks I was I was like, nah, 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 stick to the melody a little bit more here, you know, because <laughs> if you stray too much from the melody, it's it's not good either. Mm -hmm. But uh, usually he knows what to do, and uh, uh, no, those runs are, are totally him, you know. They're I all him. Never <laughs> yeah, they're all him. <laughs> Yeah. That's cool. And and the, and the same goes with with the guitar players. I would never tell, you know, I have Steve I on my on my new album. I would never tell him what to do. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not going to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, uh same thing there. They have total they don't even get guide guitars or whatever, you know. It's oh, just wow. go for it. And, uh, Whoa. That's cool. Yeah. 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 So, it's more like uh if you're you were talking about your composition style and how it's evolved since you first started Arion, mm -hmm. you sort of let go and said, I'm gonna build more of this skeleton format or kind of like maybe I'll build the structure of the house and you guys decorate it. Or something like that. Um that's that's a good good thing, yeah. That's a good thing. Uh and I, I am I'm a control freak, you know. So I have <laughs> the end control and I can send them back if I don't like it or whatever. Of course. But yeah, I <laughs> but yeah, I, I put down the basis. Like for drums, I just program everything on the computer. Mm -hmm. Um so the drummer basically knows what to do, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to go on the hi-hat here, I've got to go on the right there, I have to go double kick here and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then of course all the breaks and all the fills and stuff, you know, they uh they should should do it to uh, come up with it themselves, you know, because they're better at their job than I am. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I had to learn to to give people uh freedom. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it's uh, for a control freak like me that <laughs> wasn't so scary. easy. Yeah. So what about, um, it's not just freedom that I hear, but I also, I feel like I hear the singers almost being nudged into something even greater when I'm hearing your music. I, I'll talk about um, with Brittany and uh, in the more recent, it was Star One, Fate. Fate, Fate of Man. Yes, Fate of Man. Yeah. Um, it, it just leaned into her power top belt so very well. It was, mm -hmm. Right. It highlighted the part of her voice that is one of the most extraordinary things about her mm -hmm. as a singer. No way, no fear. You know, when you're working with a singer like this, do you do you nudge and you say, no, 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 you can go one note higher or hold it two seconds longer? <laughs> do you ever do, <laughs> do things like that where you, you know that they're capable and they, I don't know, I don't know how Brittany works in that situation, but it's just an example. Um, do, you, do you feel like you're able to help them even extract even more greatness oh, yes. than they thought? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's my speciality. Yeah. You know, and that it's also the big compliment I so often get, you know, like this singer sound better on your album than in his own or her own band. And <clears throat> that's such a huge compliment from me. And uh, I, I, yeah, I, I try to get the best out of singers and... Um, Sometimes it's a long process, but mm -hmm. in the end, you know, they're they're happy that I <laughs> that I really put, you know, put some pressure on them. But yeah. 
yeah, it's it's always you can do better. Uh, <laughs> or, oh no, I would not say that. You know, that's I, I would always motivate them. Yeah, that was amazing. But you know, I think you could even do this. You know, and and then they do it, and and uh, it's almost. It's not true, of course, but it's almost like I will them. You know, yes. it's almost like I can guide them. I want them to do this, and then it happens. You know, uh-huh. that's those are fantastic, uh, fantastic moments. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I totally relate to this from the classical perspective, where there are some conductors and composers. We were both sides, but if you're on stage with a conductor, and you'll even see how he's um, shaping his hands, and you know. He mm-hmm. knows that you can get a little bit more out of the phrase maybe during that particular performance. There are certain conductors that are just connected and know the voice and the singer, and as he's going, no, 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 keep it, keep it, keep it going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. that kind of a nudge. Or um, I love Ricky Ian Gordon. He's a composer I worked with for a very, very long time over a number of things, and he'd do the same thing where um, he'd come in and he'd just like suggest little ways that often it was more personal, emotional involved. Yeah, 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 even. yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, and and then there's the people that come back and say, "Oh, but I want that note to be staccato," and you go, Ugh. It, uh, "You know, th- there's a way to say it that's right." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you must have the right way of saying it to be able to draw out that right, 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 little extra yeah. millions. Oh, yeah, so yeah, cool. yeah. Well, that's you so always cool. have to stay positive, you know, even if mm-hmm. it's going totally shit, <laughs> which 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 of Sometimes course I had, you know, as singers, you uh-huh. know, it just totally didn't work out. But you have to be strong. You have to be like, I know this is going to work and try it this way. Yeah, you know, a high five. <laughs> I, I give high fives all the time too in recorders. Oh, recordings, good. You know, but they're heartfelt. They are real. You know, I, would, mm-hmm. I couldn't fake it. Like if it would be crappy, I couldn't fake it. So I'm so <laughs> glad when I can do that. And one of the singers even said like uh, that but while he's singing, he's always watching my face. And sometimes he sees <laughs> me smile you know and he said okay now i know it's good it's good and uh, it's um, really dangerous to watch my face when somebody's singing i think yeah <laughs> oh you sing along are you right <laughs> well I, I i tend to not sing along but if i make any sort of expression they might read into it extra and i go oh, oh okay, okay okay yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 well with tommy karavik i actually started crying oh he was like he he did a ballad or something and i was like like <laughs> uh, it was funny because he was like, no, that was crap. And I was like, huh? what? <laughs> <laughs> it was a crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's super sweet. Oh, I like, this is really fun. Um, uh, okay, just total random question. Yes. Because you have been combining opera, I just have to know, do you have a, a favorite opera? Do you ever, do you, is that something you ever listen to? Real opera, you mean? Yeah. Uh, no. So no. <laughs> You're like Jesus Christ superstar. <laughs> Jesus Christ superstar. Uh, War of the War of the Worlds. Um, mm-hmm. Tommy. <laughs> but those are rock operas, of course. Yes. But that's yeah. no. That's uh, real opera. Um, I like it in 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 doses, in small doses. Small doses. It's yeah. not for everybody. I it, I I very much feel that it, just because I really love opera, I don't expect somebody else to love it. Even no, you know, no, when no. I was going around and singing things and inviting people to performances, I would I wouldn't say um, you'll love it. I would say if you like opera, you're gonna yeah, love right, it. Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. the way. Yeah. No, I, I I try to opera and I try classical music and I uh, I like parts of it, mm-hmm. uh, especially yes. classical music. I did this project called The Gentle Storm, mm-hmm. where I wanted to do uh, classical things with uh, Anneke van Giersbergen. You you know her? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she she's amazing. She's one of the best here in Holland, maybe even in the world. She and seems uh, lovely. Uh, she's lovely too. Yeah, yeah. You should mm-hmm. really talk to her. She's she's amazing. Um, and uh, that that's when I tried to get into the whole classical world, you know, because I only knew classical music because of rock bands uh-huh. uh, 
you know, like Amish Lake and Palmer doing uh, Mussorgsky or whatever, you know, or, 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 or uh, Electric Light Orchestra doing Beethoven, you know, that's how, <laughs> how I knew my classical, the classical composers. Mm -hmm. So at some point I really tried to get into classical music and I played a lot of it and there's, there's amazing stuff. But yes. again, it's, it's like parts. Sometimes it's meandering for me and uh, uh, I, I don't have the patience for that. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, no. Yeah, there's definitely, it, I mean, it spans such a huge period of time. I mm -hmm. feel like there's definitely certain composers and certain periods that just fit people better or worse than others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. With all the, the amazing singers that you're working with, do you ever get starstruck? Like when you talk to James Labrie? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you yeah. ever have a moment where you go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm working with James Labrie. Oh, I'm, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the time. It's, uh, it's usually it fades really fast, you know, but, um, yeah, like, like, uh, like, like, uh, I, I work with Jolyn Turner, uh, who is like a, a rainbow singer. He mm -hmm. uh, joined rainbow after Dio left and, uh, he's an amazing oh, okay. singer too. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I contacted him for this <laughs> album at some point, you know, my phone is ringing and it's like, Jolyn Turner. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh my God, oh my God, what am I going to tell him, you know, I'm your biggest fan. It's like, oh, oh. and then I'm <laughs> nervous for five minutes, but within five minutes we were, we were joking and we were gossiping about other singers, you know, oh, you hate that singer. Yeah, I don't know why everyone likes him. And, yeah, I'm not going to mention names, of course, but we had so much fun together. So yeah, uh, I, I, I have, I have those moments. Um, where I realized like, oh my God, you know, this world-class musician uh, it wants to work with me, you know, and it's actually on my album. That's unbelievable. So, uh, yeah. And it's, it's, oh it's often, it's, it's often a great, great feeling, of course. Um, but it, it, it also fades fast. And I go back to my insecure self, like, you know, yeah, yeah, good. And then I'm like, oh, what next? What next? How am I going to top this? And, uh, uh -huh. But that that's the perfectionist in me, you know, and that's probably why why I do what I do, you know, just just to stay stay insecure. That's maybe a good <laughs> <laughs> a good good advice. Always challenge yourself. <laughs> always, yeah, always look for challenges. Always look for new stuff, and uh, don't try to repeat yourself. And uh, yeah, it's a good very point. important. Yeah. So, because you have such huge. Um, such a huge scope of artists that you're working with. And you've also released, I think it's 27 albums to date. Oh. That was the number I found. It's so many. <laughs> well, <laughs> Can you even name one, all of those? One, <laughs> about one a year, I guess, since, yeah. since uh, I think 1980, I made my first album. So 80, uh, could be a, could, yeah, could be about could be 50 more. albums. I have to count yeah. it one day. I'm kind of curious myself now. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. so how do you, how do you stay organized within that? Do you have, um, obviously you have a list of singers you're watching over there. So you have that yes. sort of new singers that are looking in there. Absolutely. Do you have a contact database where you say, oh, I have all of these people with these skills and this one might fit this part. And mm -hmm. do you have a team that helps you, um, stay organized or anybody that helps you with prepping sessions to send to musicians or something like that? Uh, no, no, I, I, I'm, I'm a total egomaniac control freak. So I want to, <laughs> <laughs> I want to do everything myself, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's also the personal touch. You know, I wouldn't want anyone else to do things like that. I've, I've tried with managers, but it's, uh, mm -hmm. it doesn't work for me. It, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's the control freak in me. So, um, no, I, I do basically everything myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do, however, I have a, what I call a circle of trust. Ah. And that's uh, 15 people uh, around me, mostly non-musicians, that's important, who I send uh -huh. everything. I send them the demos and I send them the guide vocals and then lyrics and stuff like that. And I get very honest opinions from them. And they're not musicians, which... Uh, most of them which which helps you know mm -hmm. um and that's that's you know other other people have like a producer or a manager or they have a band around them saying things but i do it on my own mm 
and 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 uh, the, these opinions are, and I can value their opinion, and I know like this person likes that, and that's why he would say that, and she likes this, and and uh, so yeah, I have these reactions of these fifteen people, and that really helps me to make uh, decisions. That's amazing, and I feel like that's just amazing advice for anyone. And I, I'd received some kind of early in career too about essentially having that inner circle of people that you know you can always go back to them they will give you honest opinions that are real that's and it yeah yeah there's so many people that will have opinions about things you do but you don't you you need somebody that is a baseline that really knows your work and um, knows what you're capable of to be able to give you that feedback i think absolutely absolutely yeah so cool. um uh, really cool. th they can be brutal too <laughs> yes <laughs> you know it can be like oh my god but i love this song how can you not love it you know <laughs> but that that helps you know it keeps me on my toes and it challenges me and uh, my my girlfriend Lori, she she is my biggest critic so and she will always be honest you know i, I play mm -hmm. her everything she's basically That's the first great. one she's basically the first one to hear everything and um and she really says what she thinks, you know, and, and that often helps because she tries to get the best out of me, you know. She wouldn't yeah. say shit if she, if, if, if she knew I couldn't do anything about it. But she would often say, like, you already did this, you know, on that and that album, and uh, uh, why, why do it again, you know? You, you can make it better. Basically, what I do with singers, she does with me. So uh, um, that's, that's very important, definitely. I, I, I wow. don't think I could do it all on my own. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah that's pretty incredible i yeah uh and also wonderful that you have that kind of communication with your partner too where it's just open and and just so helpful in informing and building something greater it's awesome yep <laughs> yep it is sometimes it's not so awesome but <laughs> 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 you know when she's really honest and you worked on it really hard but then in the end you know it's like i'm so happy you know, in the end, mm -hmm. I try something else and it becomes better, you know, and she was right. So I, I know that in the end, she yeah. will, she will be right. So, yeah. so, so, um, at this point in album release stage, I want to go to, to star one, um, Re Revel in Time? Revel in Time, yes. Revel in Time, yeah. yes. That's the one that's coming out, uh, in February, February. I have it. It's February 18th. I, I know. I'm so bad at dates. <laughs> I know. There's so many dates in the world. Okay. And it's available for pre-order for anybody that is watching. So please know that it is available for pre-order now. But we've already seen a couple of the songs coming out and sort of trickling out, which is really cool. But so <clears throat> at this stage of an album's production... Uh, is it already wrapped up all of your, you've had all of your trust circles into it, say, yes, this is amazing. And at this point, it's just in um, in the hands of people that are getting ready to distribute it? Yeah, it's ready. I, I got it. Uh, where, where? Uh, I don't know where it is. Anyway, I got it a few days ago, so it came in. And, I got a preview uh, of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 only, I only have the poster here. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, but nice. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, usually I'm really nervous at this point. Oh. But somehow with this album, I don't know. I, so far, all the reactions have been good. You know, I haven't heard any criticism yet. And, and oh, I'm doing like, like, I don't know, f seven, eight interviews a day now for a couple of weeks and, and all the journalists wow. I, I talk to are, are really excited. Are you and, tired um, of interviews yet? <laughs> no, it's talking about my own shit. I mean, I told you, I'm the <laughs> egomaniac control freak. I mean, nothing better than this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of interviews yeah. though. Wow. Well, I remember from, from promotion tours that, that sometimes you had to do 15 a day and then it's, that's not good. Because you can't remember what you said anymore, you know. You're like, am I repeating the same thing to the same journalist now? Or uh, that's that's just too much. But uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, no, I, it, it's just you know, I, I'm just just totally happy with with the attention. You know, it, it would be way worse if there would be no interviews. So yes, yes, luckily that is that is not your problem. No, <laughs> no. And this album has sort of. I was reading about um, the structure of it and the storyline. Do you want to actually embellish on that a little bit for people that don't know yet? 
Oh, well, my uh, Arion albums are really rock operas, like we, we talked mm -hmm. before, with an ongoing story and a lot of dialogue singing, a lot of characters. But uh, Star One is actually different. Uh, all the tracks are based on movies, uh, sci-fi movies, obviously, because uh, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm a huge uh, sci-fi <laughs> freak. And on the first Star One album, all the songs were based on the movies that were set in space, like Alien and, and uh, 2001. The second Star One album was based on movies, uh, uh, dystopian movies, like mm -hmm. uh, apocalyp apocalyptic, hard word. Um, like like Blade Runner and or or uh, Clockwork Orange, mm -hmm. and uh, this new album is uh, based on movies that are about time manipulation of time or time travel, um, and it's a concept I've always wanted to do. I, I love time travel stories. You know, this it opens mm -hmm. so many possibilities, and also in in Arion, there's a lot of time travel going on. So uh, so yeah, basically it's. Uh, uh, I, I stand in front of my, my uh, CD, I don't know if you can see, my, my DVD yeah. collection here. Yeah. And uh, I, I picked out all the songs that were about time travel. I think they were <laughs> about, about 40 or something. Uh, and that includes movies like Groundhog Day, you know, which is basically oh, about, yeah. about be someone being stuck in a, in a loop. So it's not really a time travel movie. Um, and I just pick out all my favorite movies. Uh, and then it's not like I listen to a movie and then I write a song, you know, that, that mm. doesn't work for me. It's like, like I have the 11 songs and I watch, I, I look at all these movies and I'm like, which, uh, movie would fit which song? Mm -hmm. And then it's just, uh, yeah, dividing the, the movies over the songs. Um, and then find the right singers, you know, a singer that, that, that would fit the song, but also, often a, f a singer would fit the movie. Like uh, Fate of Man is, is about Terminator. And Britney was like, oh, that's my favorite franchise of all time. It's perfect for it's Britney. Like, <laughs> okay. Typical right. Britney. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So yeah, so, yeah it's, it's not an, uh, an ongoing story. It's, it's mm -hmm. uh, uh, based on, on movies. And snippets is more, it has a, a concept throughout it that really works for it. That's cool. And um, with the sort of trickle releases of, of having, you know, some of those songs come out early on, on YouTube or, or right, singles. Right, right. Yeah. Um, is that something that's really changed over the years? I, do you feel like you're, to me, it seems like I'm starting to see more uh, tidbits released early from an album. You would usually have a single before an album come out, but... Um, do you, do you think that there are more tidbits that trickle out early in these days? Uh, especially now, because um, the, the production time of vinyl is actually half a year now. So it's Ooh. it's really shitty. The album is finished, you know, and I want, it, I want people to hear it, you know, yeah. <laughs> I want to release it. But you can't, you have to wait for the vinyl to be ready, which is half a year. Uh, and, and I, I, I yeah. don't have the patience to... <laughs> sit around for half a year, you know, and not play people anything. So uh, I came up, I don't know if you've got any of that, I came up with these guessing games. Oh, I and, was reading uh, about them. I didn't do them, but I was reading about them. Yeah. Right, right. And I did it for uh, for four months, and it's just, I play a fragment of a song mm -hmm. um, uh, with, the, with the singer, and people have to guess who the singer is. And it's, you can't Google it, you know, because the mm -hmm. song doesn't right? exist yet. No. So, <laughs> so it's 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 really really fun. I I really really enjoyed it, and the people enjoyed it, you know. And also uh -huh. they're sitting at home, you know, and they it gives them some escapism, something to do. And, yeah, uh, very and it was fun, right you know. It was fun, like with with Britney Slays. The first twenty answers, I kid you not, were it's Michael Mills. <laughs> <laughs> any, 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 anywhere where they they hear a high voice like going to the high b or the high a ah, you know hey it's michael mills oh that's so, so funny uh, it, was, it was very funny and then i'm just sitting behind the computer yeah yeah you know like controversy i love the controversy <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. that was a that was a great way, of course, uh, to have fun, of course, but also yes. to promote to promote the album, uh, <laughs> especially like because there's more than thirty guessing games. So there's more than thirty guests on it, and uh, mm -hmm. some really big names. 
and mm-hmm. and some some names that people don't know, you know, and they're both fun, you know. Big names yeah. are cool because you're very cool. I got Steve Vai on my album, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> let let people guess, you know, who it is, and it's Steve Vai. It can't be Steve Vai, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, and at the same time, there's like unknown talent, you know, and people, of course, guess all these huge singers, which is great for this unknown talent to read that you know awesome. oh, whoa they, mm-hmm. they they think i'm uh, russell allen they think i'm your londo or they think mm-hmm. i'm tori tommy Karavik. and uh, so that that was great fun so um <laughs> and and also uh, i think the record company usually releases like two singles in advance but um yeah for me this album somehow uh, i couldn't pick just two singles it was like this is a single no this is a single this in the end i had like six songs and which is too much. So in the end, yeah, I, I do five singles, uh, uh-huh. which I don't know if the record company is, is too happy with it, you know, because it's almost <laughs> half the album. But uh, uh, they're all, I don't know if you, either you probably didn't see them all. But I, am, um, I have one that I have been saving um, for a reaction. So Okay, okay, which one? <laughs> I'm not allowed to, I'm not um, allowed to know. No, uh, it is going to be the, the one that has Michael Mills, so I have not heard it Oh, yet. Cool, cool, cool. Yes, cool. Um, yeah. but I really, I really wanted uh, That's a great. thing featuring him on the, the channel. <laughs> one of my favorite tracks it's the most oh, good. funny track on the album it's it's yeah. uh, it's it's quite complex it has a lot of vocals and a uh-huh. lot of text and michael mills wrote the lyrics it's a good thing for, for you to know yes uh, yes um we actually had um one of our patrons dave was um was telling me about that and because he's a really big right. fan of toe Hider right. as well and cool, cool, anyhow cool. so it was it was cool. very interesting yeah, yeah he's um yeah. He's partly responsible, actually, for um, my interest in, in Michael Mills. That patrons are amazing. Anyhow, you know this. <laughs> great, great, cool, right? Cool. But there, I also because I have the the preview, I'm really hesitant to talk about too much else that I've I've looked at on that because I don't know how much of that's actually publicly available right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, but I I didn't see one thing which I'm I'm curious about um, with a trans transitus 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 yeah a little bit of a Latin feel there <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> there was a comic book right that came yes. along it was so cool <laughs> yes. I really I really liked that um, is that something that you think you'll do with future albums too yes. Yeah, because yes. I really enjoyed it, uh, and I'm I'm thinking of uh, re-releasing uh, my Aaron album after Electric Castle, Universal Migrator. It would be very cool to do a comic book for that one, and I already yeah. found an artist, uh, uh, Elan Lopez in Spain, who's going to do it, and we're already working on it. Cause, That's cause, so cool. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm a, I'm a huge comic fan, you know, ever uh-huh. since 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 Spider Man and stuff. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the, the, I, I can send you the comic book. I think I still have a few lying around here. So uh, Well, I have it. I have it. Oh, you have so, it? Okay. Yes. Cool. <laughs> okay, great. I have that. Not the new one that you're working on, you know, whenever that one sends, send it this way. But I definitely I have that. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. I will. I will. <laughs> uh, it's, I just thought it was one of the more cool things that came along with an album. So, uh, yeah, I wanted it to was see also if that was cool. going to happen again. <laughs> Yeah, 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 definitely. Because it's also cool to work on, you know. I, th- mm-hmm. This comic book, I never did that before. It's like, can I do it? It's it's another challenge, and um, very proud of it. It was well, a lot of work, half year of, or maybe a whole year of work, but mm-hmm. uh, definitely worth it. <laughs> I'm I'm very excited to to see that somewhere. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, I have a few questions from our our patrons actually that I wanted. Sure. To- ask and sort of amazingly um perfect timing 
Dave, who is called Quirky Uncle Dave, um, in okay. our Patreon, uh, is the first person that wanted to ask a question. So uh, here goes. Your interaction with fans through things like the movie slash artist guessing games for Star mm -hmm. One adds a fun mm -hmm. extra dimension to your projects. How do you think about audience engagement differently as a primarily studio-based project versus a touring band? Oh, can you repeat the question? Yeah, it's how do you think about audience engagement differently, um, essentially being more of a studio-based artist versus yeah, yeah. when you're touring as a band? Well, uh, f f of course, because I'm not touring, you know, this, mm -hmm. uh, this is just a great way to stay in contact with the fans and to hear. I, I'm, I, I read all the comments, you know, I try to comment on all the comments which sometimes is a bit daunting, you know, if it's yes. too much. But uh, <laughs> for for me, it's it's uh, it's a great. I, I'm so curious to hear what what fans say, you know, because I I don't tour anymore and and I don't see them anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a great way for me to to stay updated about what what people think of my work. And I'm not one of those artists who is like uh, I do what I want, you know. I don't give a shit what people think. I mean. For me, it's it's very important that fans like it, and of course, you can't please everyone. That's that's impossible. Yep. Um, <laughs> but it is my aim. It is my aim to please as many people. So, uh, uh, yeah, I I spend a few hours each day to to just comment on everything because they took the time to tell me something, you know, or to comment and and. Um, yeah, I feel it. Not my duty. Duty is a big word. I, I just like it, you know. I just like uh, the interaction with the fans. Yeah, so yeah. that that's a great, great way to do it. You're really. I feel like it's, you're just. You keep tapping on that community building aspect that is. Yeah. So important. Um, I think as we switch to have having more and more of our lives online, like you, you might not see the people's faces, but if they're commenting, they're they're creating conversations, and you're building a community with those conversations. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's that's the way to do it these days, you know. And yeah. uh, the the Aaron community is, um, I bet art, every artist says this, you know. But it's amazing, mm -hmm. you know. I, I never see shitty comments, you know, or people screaming at each other. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes I look somewhere else, mm -hmm. um, uh, but not in the Aryan community you know there's also an Aryan page on Facebook and people are just always positive and I really like that and uh, uh, I'm sure you must have the same you know you have this very positive uh, charisma yeah. and um, I think uh, I think that what we put out there and and I think that joy of music the love of getting to share those things with people mm -hmm. I think that we tend to see that reflected back I, right. That's one of my theories. I think it's also because we're both really involved with our communities yeah. um, that we're less likely to have um, things that are just really negative, but also that negative trolls exist and we straight up boot them <laughs> if we see yeah, somebody okay, yeah, yeah, spreading yeah. negativity because that's not what, right. that's not no, what our no. community is about. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh -huh. But yeah. I, I rarely have to like delete delete shit. It rarely happens. Yes, you know? Sometimes if they say something bad about a singer, I don't like it, you know? Yeah. Or li or like with the guessing games. Oh, it's that singer. I was hoping it was that singer, you know, then phew, delete it. Oh, yeah, it. that rose me the wrong not, way too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> not 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 for me, but for the singer. Maybe mm -hmm. the singer will read it, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. It's totally crappy. Yeah. So uh, yeah. People are welcome to personal opinions. I think if they're really founded and lots of knowledge that's that's fine but man, it's true uh if they're they're tearing down a singer uh in a way that is just i know, really I know. But often, like no don't do it but but often they don't mean mean yeah. it that way because right. if i delete a comment i would always send that uh, person a comment uh, a personal message mm -hmm. i would always say like hey you said sorry i deleted your comment Mm -hmm. uh, but you said this and that, what, which won't be nice to this and that person. And, and like nine out of ten times, I get an answer. Oh, sorry, I was stupid. I shouldn't have done it. And, yeah. You know, and, and and at that point, you were so happy that you didn't get angry at someone or you didn't right? block the fucker, you know. It's, right? <laughs> it's, totally. Uh, yeah. It's so, and no. then you think, oh, I'm so glad I explained it to this person. And the person understands and you both, both feel great. So It's a really great way to handle it. Yeah. Treat yep. people excellently. Yeah, we, we go again. <laughs> we go again. Be excellent to each other. <laughs>
Um, Bree Norton wants to know, uh, and we talked about this a little bit, but if you want to expand on it, this would be perfect. What artists influenced you the most over years and why? So we have the Beatles, right? We have yes, yeah. Purple. Yeah. Um, we talked some about Dio. I don't, I think he was one of the bigger ones for you, mm -hmm. um, but are there any other ones in there that you feel like were the really big ones? Uh, I would add Pink Floyd and, and uh, Pink Led, Floyd. Zeppelin. Led, Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin to that. Yeah, that's uh, Beatles, Pink Floyd, Zeppelin is the Holy Trinity, and mm -hmm. uh, anything Blackmore did, and um, yeah, the, the early, early, the late '60s stuff and the early '70s stuff. Mm -hmm. And I often think, is that because of my age? You know, because that's your formative years. Hmm. Uh, I, I was 12 at the time. Is it because of my age or is it just really that the best music was, was being made in that period? I have no idea. I, I, I can, no, I have no idea. But if you read like all these prog magazines and stuff, uh, uh, it's always going back to this era, you know, always going back to the early 70s with Yes mm -hmm. and Genesis and Emerson mm -hmm. Lake and Palmer and Jethro Tull and stuff like that. So, um but yeah, that's that's what formed me in the music, and and it's it's hard for me now to enjoy new bands because uh, huh. I I listen to it. I don't know if you have that too. Maybe you can still enjoy music as a fan. For me, it's become hard, and that moment what, what that I always feared has come. You know that I can only listen to music as a musician. You know, I listen to it and ah, the, the kick drum uh, is is a bad production or uh, the vocal's not entirely in tune. Do you do you have that or or uh, can you I, let it go and? Uh... Yeah, I I think um, I I don't think it necessarily bothers me. It makes me think a song. Uh, sometimes things, certain things, a bad production or bad audio quality is something that'll make it really bother me. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that more often than not, the stuff that I would listen to outside of all the listening I'm doing regularly on a daily basis. Um, right. It, it will tend towards more instrumental or stuff that's softer that I can have in the background for okay. yeah, mood yeah. and atmosphere because the moment a vocal comes on, my brain goes Vroop. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> and yeah. if you play that anywhere near me when I'm trying to sleep, it just won't happen, right? Or, no, you know, no, no, no. Right, no, it's just no. I, my... I go into full gear. So, yeah, it, yeah it, I think it's a similar thing, and it's possible that I will get exhausted by that later on. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I, yeah. I, I, can't, I can't do it either. Is there music in the background? I listen, you know? Yeah. Whatever music <laughs> it is, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're trying to have conversation with somebody at dinner, and they've got something Oh, no, that's you're terrible. Like... <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible, right? yeah. I'm, ah. I'm gone. I'm gone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right, G.L. Schmidt wants to know, well, actually, first of all, he said, thank you for your amazing music. Love that. That's a good way to start. You're very welcome. Right. <laughs> he said, uh, what is the casting process like for your albums? Do you write something and think, oh, this person would sound good on this? Or do you have certain singers in mind and write something to take advantage of their particular voice? Um, for instance, if Elizabeth here were to guest on one of your albums, like what kind of role would you have her play? Probably like dying soprano. That's what I always say. <laughs> yeah, what yeah, sort yeah. of song would you write for her? So I, I love this question because I feel like it really gets at the bottom of, um, how you're working so closely with singers. So I feel like this question might be different depending on who. That's the that's the answer. You're coming. That, okay. It's it's really different. It's mostly it's the music first, and then I try to find the right singer uh -huh. for the song. You know, but sometimes I hear a voice and I think like I have to write a song for this voice. Ah. Like like uh, on this album, there's Revel in Time, uh, Brandon Yakely. I I saw a clip of him. Uh, you know him? <laughs> no, I saw that name on the album and went, oh, who's okay, this? Yeah, and yeah. then got very excited. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I, um, I saw a clip of him on YouTube uh, with his band Crowbot and I knew, oh, I got to work with this guy, you know. Uh -huh. And he had this, he has a lot of humor and he has a lot of power and I like the combination of those two. Uh, so that's a song that I wrote especially for him. I knew his uh -huh. range, you know, I, I knew he sounds great uh, uh, at that b you know we can go up to that d and even That's give hilarious. it more um 
So uh, sometimes it happens. And uh, but uh, yeah, what would I write for you? I I, I saw some <laughs> a little little bits bits of you. Uh, of course, your strength is opera. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you got? Do you have like clips also where you sing not sing opera or like different stuff? Um, or? I think I think the thing that's really got my brain uh, going the most, or I, I should say, my creative juices flowing the most yeah, 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 um, these yeah. days are usually doing the a cappella, where I I'm tracking all throughout, and there's definitely a classical influence in there, but it you know it's definitely tilting. When I think of opera, I think, you know, full, like 4,000 people know Mike kind of thing. Right, I think a right, lot of people yeah. think classical music instead of opera. So I think it tilts opera a lot closer towards pop or I should say more okay, musical okay. theater. Okay. But I think, um, yeah, for me, the, the thing that I just like is um, the ability to make tons of different sounds and right, sound right, kind yeah. of like your own symphony. <laughs> and I know oh, that's okay. what I dig. So it's like a Bohemian Rhapsody uh, thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like. Yeah. That's probably or, why I also or, liked or, the or one zero one. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I think yeah, that's yeah, probably yeah, yeah. why I was yeah. so impressed by that yeah, part. Yeah, well, it's a good <laughs> thing that you're you're doing prescient because it has an a cappella part in it actually. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. that's so hard to produce. Oh. Yeah, I know. It's. I th I think for me it, it all came <laughs> with a band called Gentle Giant. I don't uh -huh. know if you know them. I, I've They're heard like of them, a, but I don't know them. Yeah, it's a 70s band who had a lot of these a cappella things where they're oh. like, dun, 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 and all these uh -huh. voices, they, they all go somewhere like weird and then they all come together and uh, you should check it out. It's, it's uh, very cool. Lots of a cappella stuff. That sounds it's, fun. It's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. But yeah, I, for you, I would, for opera voices, I would write like a majestic part, like... Uh, like a and then, you know, uh, that opera voice on top. And I heard you do some stuff which was pretty impressive. Uh, <laughs> I, I would know what to do. Maybe one day I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll come up. I, when the opera strikes you. <laughs> well, I, I, I have a little bit of opera on all my albums. Yeah, you know? that's true. You do. You lean of of course, when you have mm -hmm. someone like Flora Janssen, you know, who's, who's good at it, uh, mm -hmm. you're going to use some of that side of her. For sure. You know, so yeah, I, I got my little opera parts on on, <laughs> on all my albums. It's yeah. fun. Um, I love this question from Jacob because he knows how much you love synthesizers. Jacob Bingham said, "When did your love for synthesizers first begin, and what was the first synthesizer you ever owned?" Uh, it began when I heard, heard uh, "Tangerine Dream" um, oh. in the early seventies. That I'm a total Tangerine Dream freak, you know, Phaedra or, or Ricochet or uh, all those albums. It was just, just sequences going like, tuk -tuk 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 -tuk. the sounds were so amazing, you know, these analog sounds. So my love for, for synthesizers started there with Tangerine Dream. And of course, later on with uh, Rick Wakeman and, and uh, Keith Emerson, you know, Keith Emerson especially, he had the best sounds ever. Mm. And... Um, my first synth was a really, really crappy thing. <laughs> you could, no, I don't even know the know the brand anymore. It was yeah, you know, I couldn't afford anything. You know, I couldn't afford a mini moog. It will cost you thousands. Right. You know, they're so expensive. Okay. I know. Yeah, yeah. I, luckily, I have one, and I, I cherish it. But Sorry. but yeah, it will cost you thousands. And and of course, they're very limited. You know, it's not like you buy a, one of these modules nowadays where you have. A, 4,000 sounds in it, you know, yeah. it's a uh, mini MOOC, it's, it's monophone, so you can only play one note at a time, but um, often the limitations make an instrument good, you know, and that <gasps> definitely yes. goes for the, for the mini MOOC. That, so, um, that, I feel yeah. like that isn't said enough. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, uh, first synth, I, I, I really, <laughs> I really, uh, what was it called? Nah, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I know it was crappy. It was totally crappy, but I <laughs> use it a lot. <laughs> Gotta start somewhere, right? Yeah. Sorry? Okay. I said you have to start somewhere. I had to start somewhere, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. It's like everybody's first microphone when they're starting to record things. You're not gonna go out and get the most expensive, fancy oh, microphone, no, no, right? No, no, you gotta, no. you gotta, you need to start somewhere. That's, Make sure that you like this whole thing. recording thing. Oh, yes, that's a good thing. <laughs> and. 
uh, a lot of people think, oh, if I get a really nice microphone, it's going to make me sound good. And the answer is no, you need to sound good first. <laughs> Not at all. And Not you at can all. use a crappy microphone to figure out how to sound better. And, and then when you graduate, it'll, it'll work. And that, and that goes for all instruments. <laughs> yes. <You> know, it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Uh, last question from our patrons here is yeah. from Ben Lacey. Uh, <laughs> this is funny. Oh, Who is your dream? How tall vocal? are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, wait. Is it true? This is my question. I read that you're six seven. Is that uh, accurate? It's 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 two oh two. I think that translates at six seven. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But I think I think on on the internet someone told me there's a list of the tallest guitar player in the world. You're looking at him. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Or the tallest. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was even the tallest musician. I think it was Peter Steele. Mm -hmm. But oh, um, yeah, he's and I, I met him once. I think we were equally tall. So, um, but now I'm, I'm at least I'm number one somewhere. You know, <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. so funny. Yeah, ben Lacey said, "Who is your dream vocal collaborator, and why is it Getty Lee?" <laughs> All kidding aside, though, I've heard okay. you talk about Rush in an interview or two, and I'm curious how they influenced you. I definitely hear some nods to their style and phrasing in your music. Yeah, the funny thing was with the guessing games, like no matter who it was, that maybe it was Ben, there was uh -huh. always one person, Geddy Lee. Oh. Know, <laughs> it didn't matter if it was a guitar solo or a female singing, you know, the answer was always Getty. There was always a Getty Lee in <laughs> Maybe there. Maybe that was Ben. <laughs> and it, uh, and it, it, I, I, I would have liked to surprise this person by having the real Getty Lee on it, but <laughs> unfortunately that doesn't happen. Yeah, a huge influence, huge influence. Uh, what was the first thing I heard? Maybe it was 2112. Uh, which we can add to the rock operas, basically the song 2112 is this uh -huh. whole story. You know, it's, fun. it's, it's also a big, big, big inspiration on me. So yeah, all those first albums, uh, Caress of Steel, Hemispheres, most of all, uh, Permanent Waves would be my, my favorite uh, Rush album, just because it has the best songs. Um, I totally love Rush. I, I, I love, uh, uh, the drum, drums, Neil part, of course, and the ba bass playing of, of, uh, of Getty Lee is, is amazing. And, and his, his voice too, you know, it's a love it or hated voice, I guess, but, uh, especially in the old days, you know, they're like, uh, we are the priests of the temples. It's like, uh, whoa, you know, as, as a kid, I, I, I totally loved it. So, uh, uh, yeah, big, big inspiration, big influence. You heard that well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so fun. Oh, I just actually got introduced to Rush. Um, about a month ago. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so I heard Spirit of the Radio, and we're going to be doing. Ah, uh, okay. It's from Paranoid Waves, so. <laughs> and I've Spirit been told the that radio. they're so different as they as their albums. They, go on, they are, yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be similar uh, to you in the way you've been really deliberate about being very. Uh, different. I think so. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. I, I would avoid the '80s stuff a little bit. You know, they oh. got into synthesizers a bit, the, the wrong synthesizers a little bit. <laughs> I, I lost them for a couple of albums there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was so interesting hearing Getty Lee and, and thinking, I'd, I'd heard people essentially had that love or hate reaction. It was very strong. Yeah. And I just thought, this voice is so perfect for what they're doing. It, it was. It, it is, it, it is, yeah. yeah. Right? And that's one of those times where you say, um, like, I, don't, I don't know how expansive his range is. I don't know how expansive his technical abilities are. Yeah. But dang, it it fit that perfect that Absolutely. pocket just really well. Absolutely, yeah. So cool. But but he was always already singing a bit lower at that at that point uh -huh. with moving pictures and permanent waves. Uh, uh, the early stuff is really uh, it's 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 really uh, uh, what would the word be? It's uh, it's pretty intense. Intense mm -hmm. would the word be? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. You should check out the really early stuff. It's cool. Okay. Yeah. We're, yep. I'm 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 going down that rabbit hole. I'm pretty yeah. excited for it. Oh, it must be so <laughs> it must be so great. I wish I didn't know all these things. I, I, could, <laughs> I hope you know how how fortunate you are that you It's really you are cool. discovering all this shit. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's super awesome. Yeah. Um, same thing as like getting to discover you and talk to you. Um Cool. So 
Before we wrap up, I just want you to pitch yourself and to tell us everywhere we can find you, how we can support you best. If the best way we can support you is by buying your albums or listening to your music on YouTube, where, where, where do you get the most support from and what can we do? Uh, I wouldn't want to tell any, want to tell anyone what to do, you know, oh. <laughs> really. No, but what if they just, just, want just, to just enjoy you? my music any way you uh. want, you know, you want to Spotify it or, uh, really, uh, I have such loyal fans, and and uh, I, I, I uh, you know, I can come by financially uh, very well. Uh, I have no complaints, nothing. So, as long as people listen to my music, it doesn't matter which which way. You know, really, it's uh, just just enjoy it and let me know what you think of it. You know, that that means a lot to me. And uh-huh. uh, yeah, of course, Spotify is is. Uh, <clears throat> It's kind of well. Many musicians must have told you this. It's kind of a laugh, you know, getting getting zero point zero 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 two cent per stream. I think it is. Yeah. But uh, hey, I totally understand. You know, especially the the younger generation that listen to music this way. So, um, and and I, I would say, you know, most financially, uh, we uh, I do signed copies now in. Um, uh, in a in our own merch store, mm-hmm. uh, but they're almost sold out, so I don't have to promote that anymore. <laughs> there are there are almost there are a few copies left, and I want to keep some copies for myself, you know, to send to people. So it's almost gone. So you know, whatever. <laughs> so good luck, people. By the time this interview is posted, those copies might be gone, uh, and that's for the pre order album, right? It, it's the pre the signed pre orders. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And we already started downstairs. We got some huge tables against the wall and uh, uh, already started signing. It's, it's, it's a couple of weeks of work, actually. I was going to say, that's a lot longer <laughs> than weeks. most people think it's going to be. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. It's not just the signing, you know. It's you have to get the boxes. You have to undo them. You have to take the shrink wrap off and you have to put them up. To, you know, it's... it's yeah. uh, it's a big job, but I enjoy it. We usually do it with some people and put some music on. And, uh, <laughs> so that's awesome. No complaints. I start complaining when you know there's no more albums to sign, <laughs> which, is, which is not the case yet. So that's uh, well. I love. Okay, so the answer is pre-order album, listen and enjoy music. That's it. I love it. That's it. Yeah, well, and you. of course, uh-huh. be excellent to each other. <laughs> Be excellent to each other. <laughs> yes. I love I love that. That's the, the whole crux of the conversation. <laughs> Thank you for being so excellent to me and um, taking time to chat with us. Again, and- my pleasure. Same goes for you. Thanks for your attention and support. <laughs> and uh, I'm very curious uh, to see your prescient uh, reaction. Really, I'm <laughs> looking forward to that one. I think it's going to be pretty fun. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, very curious. And- uh, good luck with the, the release. I know that I'm going to be watching that too. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I said good luck with the whole that whole album release. I'm going to be okay, watching right. how that goes. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. There's one more single to go. So it's the one with Russell Island. So uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, yeah. I, didn't, I was like, I don't know if yeah. I can talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, yeah. There you go. Well, thank you so much. And uh, and I'm sure we'll hear much more of you and your wonderful music on the channel soon. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Cheers. Brilliant. Cheers. Oh, here we go <laughs> with the Beatles. Cheers. Boop. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs>